I think this is a very interesting physics problem. This is a hydrogen atom. And in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, we have a proton and an electron orbiting around as though it were like a planet orbiting a star. And it does not work that way. Okay, quantum. Uh, when you get down to the atomic level, things don't behave the way you think they behave. But it's still a useful model. So we're going to use this Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, and we're going to calculate how much energy it would take to take that electron and move it an infinite distance away. And I'm going to do it two ways, and we call this ionization. So if you take an electron away from an atom, then it's ionized. And so this would just be not even really an atom. You'd have a proton electron. But nonetheless, we're going to start with a proton an electron at the Bohr radius. This is called the, the Bohr radius is if it was orbiting this is where it would be, and that is uh, 0 0.529 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. Okay, so this is an energy problem. We're trying to calculate the energy. So we're going to say our system is the proton plus the electron. And that means that I want to look at the changes in energy of the system, and the changes in energy would be equal to the work. So the work is going to be equal to the change in uh, energy of the system. Now, I'm going to show you later, we're going to deal with the kinetic energy too, but let's just start with the change in electric potential energy. Okay. So the change in U, I'll call this UE, it's going to be equal to, for the electron, I'm going to take that electron an infinite distance away, well it's for the system. It's going to be the charge of electron, which is negative E, times the change in electric potential. Now, if I want to do that, I can define the electric potential due to a point charge as Ke over R. And so this change in potential energy is going to be equal to, uh, let's write that over here, delta Ue is going to be the final potential energy, so it's going to be an infinite distance away. If I get an infinite distance away, R is very, very, very large, this becomes zero. So the final potential is zero minus the initial, but the initial is going to be negative, right? Because I have a negative electron charge, a positive proton charge, I'm pointing right there, and when you multiply those together, you get a negative. So zero minus a negative is going to be plus K E squared over RB. So that is my change in potential energy to get that electron far away. Let's go ahead and calculate that. I'm going to calculate that and then we're going to do it a different way. So delta UE is going to be K 9 times 10 to the 9th times E squared 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th squared over 0 0.529 times 10 to the negative 10th. So let's put that in our calculator and see what we get. Calculator time. Uh, drop 9 times 10 to the 9th, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, enter squared times, and then 0.529 times 10 to the negative 10th divided by and I get a change in energy of 4.36 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. That's the joules. Okay, <clears throat> now that's a super, 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 super tiny amount of energy. And typically when we deal with atoms and electrons, we would write this energy in electron volts. So remember that one electron volt is the energy one electron with a charge of 1.6 times to the negative 19th gets by going through one volt of potential. So this is 1.6 times to the negative 19th coulombs times one volt, 1.6 times to the negative 19 joules. So if I take this and multiply, or I'm sorry, divide by this value, I can convert that to an energy in electron volts. So delta U is going to be this, 4.36 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times 1 EV over 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And I get 1.6, and technically didn't have to do this, but times 10 
to the negative 19th divided by. I get delta E is 27.2 EV. Okay, that's not the real answer because the real answer might surprise you. And, and I'd like to do that. Okay, but let's do this another way. I'm going to write this over here. Delta U E is 27.2 EV. Now I can erase this other stuff. So suppose I wanted to do this a different way. I still want to calculate the work, but I want to do that using the force. So if I have this charge over here, this electron, well, there's going to be an attractive force Fc that way. And so I'm going to have to push on it with the force F called Fp that way. And that those would have to be equal to move it at a constant speed and not change the kinetic energy. Um, and as I move further and further away, that force is going to decrease because this force decreases. So I don't have to push as hard. Now I can calculate the work. Uh, a lot of times we see this as F dot delta R where that's a vector and that's a vector, but you may also see this as F, let's call this delta S, I guess delta R, cosine theta. So the work done on a particle, if the force is constant, is the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between those two. So in this case, if I'm moving this way, then I'm going to be moving in the, pos in the same direction that I'm pushing, so the work is going to be positive. But this only works if the force is constant, which it's not. So here's what we're going to do. Suppose I move a short distance delta, delta R. And if delta R is, let's say, um, delta R is going to be RB over 100. I just picked a value. It's this Bohr radius divided by 100. So it's, it's a fairly short uh, space. Over that short space, I can calculate the force k e squared over r squared and assume that that force is constant. The force is not constant, but I can assume that the force is constant. If the force is constant, I can calculate the work just done over that little path, and I'll call that dw for the work. It's going to be that force times delta r. But that's not the total work to get to an infinite distance away. So I'll need to do that again over the next short path, where on this next short path, I'll have to recalculate the force because I'm a new distance away. And then I'll do it again, and then I'll do it again, and then I'll do it again. And you can, each path, the force would decrease, so the work would decrease, and eventually I'd get to, I don't have to push it at all. Now, the total work done would just be the sum of all these little pieces of work. And then the question is, how do I have to get to an, an infinite distance away? Well, an infinite distance away is hard to do because I'd have to do an infinite number of steps. But since the work gets smaller and smaller and smaller, I could just kind of say, well, close enough. So maybe we go over here to, uh, let's say, let's say 100 times the radius of that. So um, maybe just 10 because this is going to be a lot of steps. If each step size is 1 one hundredth, Let's just go to 10. We can change this later. Okay. But you can see here that if each step size is 1 100th and I do up to 10 RB, this is going to be a thousand steps. And I don't want you don't want to do a thousand steps. No one's got time for a thousand steps, right? You got stuff to do. You got to do your own stuff. So what do we do? We make a computer do it. And so I'm going to show you how to do this in Python. Uh, Python is a pretty friendly language if you haven't done anything like this before. Um, I'm going to step you through the whole thing. So let's jump over here to the computer and do this. Okay, I've already kind of already started, so. Okay, so this is uh, what's called WebVPython. It's online Python and it has some tools already built in there that we can use. I'm going to give you a link to this code, uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, I've already entered some values in here. I have the K from the Coulomb force, I have the charge of electron, I have the, uh, the, the starting position. Now the next thing I need to know is what's my step size and then uh, what, what are we going to do from there. Okay, so let's go over here. 
I need, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Make that big again. That's good, I like it, I like it like that. Uh, so let's say uh, r is equal to, I'm gonna just type this in 0 0.529 times 10 to the negative 10th. So that's my starting value of r. What I'm gonna do is move that value along, but that's where I'm starting at. And then I already said my step size dr is gonna be rb over 100. Uh, and so what I want to do is to move that value until I get to 10 times RB. So let's just do that. I'm going to do that with the, with the while loop. While R is less than 10 times RB, colon, do the following. And, and I'm, I'm not going to do anything other than just increase the value of R. So R equals R plus DR. So that looks like uh, the R's would cancel, but they don't because this is not an algebraic equal to sign. This is a make equal to sign. So this is take the value of r, add dr, and then set that equal to the value of r. And if I run this, let's just run this and then print the value of r just to see if it works. r equals uh, r. I'm going to run it. So it's going to do the loop and end up, and you see here I'm right, I'm at 10 times further away. So it did indeed work. Okay, so now what I can do, I know that value of r, I can calculate uh, the value of the force. So let's calculate the force. It's going to be k times e squared divided by r squared. All right, that's the Coulomb force. Um, so in Python squared or raised to the power is star star. It's not hat, just so you know. But now I know the force. I can calculate the work the, the, during that little step. dw equals f times dr times cosine theta, which cosine theta is one because theta is zero. Now I want to add that to the total work. And to do that, I need to have a total work, which I don't have. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna say work equals zero. So that's my total work. And now that I have that, I can add this work equals work plus D work, and then I'll be done. And so that then at the end, I'll have the work done for that whole trip and we can print that out. So let's print that out, print, work equals, and you can't even see that because I'm dumb. Print work equals uh, work, and this will be in, oh comma, in joules. And then we can also convert that to electron volts by dividing it by 1.6 times to the number 19. So I'm gonna say w, w divided by E, and that will be in electron volts. Let's run it. And you see here, I get something that's a little bit different than what I got before. I got 27.2 and now I have 24.6. So let's just try running this for a larger distance and see if that helps. Uh, I'm gonna change this to 100 even though I said that was a bad idea. I'm gonna do it anyway. And there, I get 27.08. So, I mean, we're making some approximations, but we're still getting the same answer. And this is what's called a numerical calculation. It's kind of a big deal. Okay, now I wanna show you the magic. Okay, so let's go back to the board. Right here. Okay, hello. Where's my chalk? Here's my chalk. Got my chalk. So if you think about this energy to get the electron out. And if you've taken chemistry, you'll know that the, uh, the ionization energy for hydrogen is actually uh, delta, let's say delta E, is negative 13.6 electron volts. And if you look over here, that's, that's like half. Well, that's the energy level, so the, the ionization is, is positive. That's how much energy you have to take to, to get it away. So that's, half of this value, so why is it half? Why is that one wrong? Okay, so here we have to go back to the Bohr model and we can make an approximation. So let's, let's get that number right there. I'm gonna show you how that number comes about. So imagine I have this electron orbiting at a velocity. Uh, well, in that case, the Coulomb force attracting it to the proton uh, causes it to move in a circle. Again, Bohr model wrong and that's fine. So if that's the case, then I can say the Coulomb force, K E squared over RB squared, that's the force, right? That's gonna be equal to centripetal acceleration times the mass. 
So it's going to be the mass of the electron times V squared over RB. So that is the Bohr radius. And let's just solve this for MV squared. But this is what has to happen in order to move in a circle. So if I uh, multiply both sides by RB, I get KE squared over RB equals MV squared. What does that kind of look like? That kind of looks like the kinetic energy, kind of. So let's just divide by 2 and divide this by 2. So here I can write the kinetic energy as KE squared over 2RB. I don't even need to know the mass of the electron. And you'll notice what that is. That is half of the potential energy right there. But we don't even need to know that right now. Let's just go back to the work energy principle. So work is going to be the change in electric potential energy plus change in kinetic energy. So we want to calculate this work. It's going to be the final potential, which is zero, minus the initial potential, which we said was uh, negative, because we have one of those is negative, right? This E right here, we write, we're looking at the magnitude of that force, so that's fine. So it's going to be plus K E squared over RB. That's the, that's the initial potential energy. It's negative, but we're subtracting that. And then we need to take the final kinetic energy, which is zero. So I'm going to take some of that kinetic energy of the electron and use it to move further and further away. So I don't have to provide all of the energy to get rid of it. I already got some. The electron's moving. Minus the initial kinetic energy, which is this right here. So that's uh, one half. Let's just put this as k e squared over 2rb. And now I can combine these two terms, because they're the same except for the 2, and I get 0. Uh, I get work equals 0 plus this minus that. So I'm subtracting off a half, so I get k e squared over 2rb, which is going to be equal to uh, 27.2 electron volts over 2, which is going to be equal to uh, 13. Point Six, one. And that's where that comes from. And again, Bohr model, not true, but still kind of fun to play with. The end.